Hi, I'm Jack Kimfield, and welcome back to another segment of Talking About Success, where I bring you great authors, wonderful books, strategies, and techniques for you to have your life be more successful and create the life of your dreams. My next guest is Tom Scarta from New York. From New York. <laughs> New York. You got the accent to go with it. He's the author of two really wonderful books. The first is called Franchise Sway, and you are... You're a franchise expert. We're going to talk about that. And another book called The Magic of Choosing Uncertainty. And um, these are both wonderful books. I really love what you've done. Uh, Tom's helped over 1,000 people make dramatic change, 180-degree changes in their life, become yeah. more successful. Talk about that. Guest on many radio shows and speaks to organizations and corporations about how to get their staff to stop smoking hopium. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> So let's start with that. Yeah. What does that mean, smoking hopium? Well, what I have found first in my own life and then with other people that I work with is that people are hoping that their life is going to get better. And I tell them they got to stop smoking hopium and make something happen. They got to take responsibility as you preach in your book. Mm -hmm. Got to take responsibility. So stop smoking that hopium. Okay. So let's, let's jump into this book then, The Magic of Choosing Uncertainty. And you got unhappiness and uncertainty, two kind of choices you can make here. Yeah. Choosing uncertainty. Most people like to be certain about things. So why is choosing uncertainty important? You know, choosing uncertainty in my mind is uh, having faith, but also it is really following your soul's purpose. Mm -hmm. So uncertainty is where the magic happens. And if you stay inside your comfort zone, you know, you can have an okay life and, and that's fine. But if you really want to make some magical things happen in your life and go to the next level, you have to choose uncertainty. You have to be uncomfortable and, sur and surf on the edge of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So what inspired you to write this book? Here you are. You're doing all this great work with franchising, which we'll talk about. But why this? That's a great question. That the magic of choosing uncertainty, the impetus for that was the fact that I work with hundreds of people all over the country, you know, well over a thousand people, actually, as you said, looking for franchises, and they get to a certain point in the due diligence process and they get cold feet, which is natural because they're doing something they've never done. And I always tell people, you know, you could pick franchise A or franchise B. That's not really your decision. The real decision comes down to the choice between uncertainty or unhappiness. And most people choose unhappiness, unfortunately, and they stick with the boss that they hate and being on the plane all the time and missing the kids' soccer games again. And that just breaks my heart when that happens. Yeah, I think I saw a statistic like 85% of people don't like their jobs. Yeah, yeah. A recent survey said 86% of Americans are ready to change their job today if they can. See, just since I looked at that and you looked at that, 1% increase from 85 <laughs> to 86. So you're basically saying to people, listen, if you're not happy in your job, you're feeling stuck in a corporation, whatever it might be, you could be your own boss. You could have your own company, in a sense, your own business. And one of the, one of the options for that is the franchising world, right. which you, you jumped into. How did, how did you get into franchising? Yeah, so I, I used to be a subway conductor, New York City subway. And I, loved, I really loved what I did, but I wanted to do something different. It was stifling my creativity. And I realized that franchising, or, or actually business owners, were living the lifestyle I wanted to live. But I didn't know how to run a business. I was a government guy. So I realized that a franchise is a business with training wheels, and that's what I needed. A, a franchise holds your hand from the very beginning when you start that business. They train you all the way to fruition when hopefully you sell it for a lot of money the, the way I did. And that is the essence of franchising is, is that you have, you're in business for yourself but not by yourself is, mm -hmm. is what you hear all the time, and that's, that's so true. Now you told me before we got on the air about a conversation you had with someone who was working in the subway world about shirts. Oh, and, yeah. and, and that's what got you to decide that you wanted to change. Well, tell, tell that story. I love it. Well, you, you had said, you know, when did you make that change, right? There has to right. be like a, a moment. And, and I, what, I, what I remember so clearly is I was a subway conductor and there was an old timer there um, in the lunchroom kind of holding court. And he looked like he was there for, since 19... Uh, 04 when the subway opened and he looked at me and he said hey kid and I was young at the time and he's like this is a great job you'll always have a shirt on your back it'll never be a silk shirt but you'll always have a shirt and that hit me like a bucket of cold water and I felt like wow that's 
not what I want. I'm working my butt off. My days off are Tuesday and Wednesday. When does it get better? And, and when I looked around, I realized that my seniors in the in the company were not, you know, doing much better. At the, <laughs> even though they had ten or twenty years on the job, I realized I needed I need to take control of my own destiny, and that was that. Looks like you made it. Looks like you're wearing a silk shirt from Robert <laughs> Graham right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of like my statement. I there you made, go. I made it. Right? Yeah, you did, you did, you did. So you're you're considered a franchise expert, and you're you're in a consulting business now in that world. Right. Talk about that. So um, I'm a certified franchise executive. So I went through this uh, rigorous uh, study program to get this CFE uh, certification. And what I do is I help people figure out number one, if franchising is for them because it's not for everybody. And so we go through kind of a soul-searching interview where I understand not only the skills that they bring to the table, but I want to learn about their goals and really what they want to get out of a business and what they, what they really want to, um, how they want to spend their day-to-day -day in the operation. And with that information, once I understand what they're trying to go after, then I could match businesses to them. Instead of them, instead of them waking up in the morning and saying, oh, I love donuts, so I'm going to open up a donut franchise, because <laughs> that would be a mistake, actually. <laughs> yeah, you talked about that with golf, too. You mentioned the... That, that's right. You don't want to go with your hobby, necessarily. Yeah, you, you know, because you probably heard people say, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And that's true if you're working a job. But a business is not working a job. A business is building equity and building something for your future. And you don't have to love... I mean, you could be a vegetarian and own a McDonald's. It's all about the business giving you a lifestyle. And that's what I try to really help people understand and, and get to is, is a lifestyle. And a lot of people feel like, oh, you need a million dollars. There's all these myths. You need a million dollars to start a franchise. You're going to be married to it 80 hours a week. And that's not true. Um, in franchising, there's more than 3,500 franchises in 90 different industries. Um, 89 have nothing to do with food, so, which is really the, the businesses that are tougher to run. Uh, so you could be in a business and... and Actually, keep your full-time job and build it on the side through a manager. You manage the manager. So that's I try to help people get to a business that's going to really help them and not um, be, be over their head financially and time-wise and, and all that. So 3,500 franchises out there, you help people get into one that's going to be the right one for them. And it doesn't take a million dollars. What does it take for most people to get into the franchise business? What it, kind of range of investment? You know, it's... To do something that's going to be a real business and, and make real money, uh, the investment is going to be minimally um, forty to fifty thousand dollars probably. But you know, I have access to all sorts of um, loans for folks. So as long as you have like a six eighty credit score, I could get you a loan easily for a uh, hundred to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to start a business mm -hmm. where you could make six figures after, after you build the foundation of it. Pretty phenomenal, quickly. Phenomenal. Now, is it true you're thinking about another book you're writing? I, I am. So my third book uh, is go going to, it's titled right now, The Five Business Lessons I've Learned uh, Being a Member of an Outlaw Motorcycle Gang. So you were a member of an outlaw, <laughs> an outlaw motorcycle gang. When was that? Yeah, so this was actually in the 80s uh -huh. uh, before I actually got into the, the transit business. Um, I, I was actually in college going to school, but I had this old Harley Davidson, and I used to ride it to school. I used to park it on the sidewalk, and uh, the dean asked me politely to uh, cut my hair and, <laughs> and stop parking on the sidewalk because I was leaving oil stains everywhere, and um, I quit <laughs> because of that. And then one thing led to another, and I met some guys uh, in downtown Brooklyn and joined this uh, gang, and that's a... A whole book in itself that you, you'll have to read. So get, can you give us one lesson you learned of being a, in a motorcycle gang? Yeah, I mean, there's a, so many lessons. But business-wise, um, there's something that I came up with, which is Bragg's, B-R-A-G-S. And Bragg's is B is um, brand. It's all about the brand. If you think about a motorcycle gang, it's all about their logo. Imagine having a business so powerful that your employees are willing to tattoo it into their skin. There you now go. that's a brand. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Very good. Very good. Very good. Well, you're one fascinating guy. I wish we had more time to talk. Unfortunately, yeah. we don't. But this wonderful book, Franchise Savvy, 
I love this book, The Magic of Choosing Uncertainty, because I baby. agree with you. You've got to be willing to step out of your comfort zone. I say everything you want that you don't have is just outside your comfort zone. That's exactly right. And when you step outside, there is no guarantee, but there's guaranteed you won't get anything if you stay inside that zone. That's right. So, I'm, so anyway, two wonderful books. People want to find out more about you, your books, find out about you as a consultant if they want to consider getting into the franchise world, hire yeah. you as a speaker, both motivational as well as informational. you got a lot of different games you're playing here. Uh, how do they find you? Best way is my website, which is just my name, TomScarta.com. TomScarta.com. Very That's simple. Easy. All right. Cool. Thank you, Jack. Take care, my friend. You guys stick around. We're going to be right back after this message. <laughs> 